Hello and welcome to some more Star Citizen. Get ready for Fleet Week. Here is what you need to know if you're a new player that's jumping into Star Citizen for the first time Fleet Week or that you wanted to get the most out of Fleet Week. What, what's going on? When will you be able to buy yeah, these very expensive addresses and stuff like that? We're also going to be talking about that new Alpha 3.23.1 patch and the new vehicles that are in it. Alpha 3.23.1 is now live. I recommend downloading that ASAP, especially if you are a current backer of Star Citizen, so you don't have to worry about any sort of queues downloading when Fleet Week goes live. The patch is ready for Fleet Week. It contains all the Fleet Week goodness in it. So Fleet Week starts at 4pm UTC, Friday the 17th of May, and runs until the 29th of May, I believe, until 11 p.m. UTC. There is a free fly running throughout, so you can try Star Citizen for free during that period. You don't need to have any sort of uh, ship package or ships or anything on your account. I will link the Fly Now page from the RSI website, which you'll want to go and visit to get access and all that sort of jazz. But before any of that, and now even, you can make a Star Citizen account using the links below. That will get you some extra bonuses, and you're going to need that to get access anyway. Everyone during that free fly period will be lent an Avenger Titan to try and to get you uh, around the verse if you weren't renting anything, but you will be able to rent anything you want from the expo halls. So every 48 hours, a new set of manufacturers will take over the Bevic Convention Center Expo Hall at Area 18 on Arc Corp. That's where you should make your way to now or potentially set as your home location. You can follow the signs to easily get to the expo when you're there. The expo focuses on combat ships, um, military, support and logistics ships. You can rent and test almost anything that appears during the expo. Press and hold F to rent or interact with um, the ship that is next to you. These rentals last for 48 hours and you can rent each ship once during the expo. During the last three days of the expo, you can rent any of the ships from the previous days from the kiosks that are at the Drake Defense Con Hall. So basically, this is a different hall. It's not the Bevec Convention Center. It is uh, by the spaceport. Again, there are signs to it, but it's not going to open up until the last few days of the actual conference. Ship sales are a big part of Fleet Week. Everything shown at the expo, including a load of ships in development, will be available on the RSI website to purchase. There will be a war bond deal or a few war bond deals every 24 hours. And from the 27th of May, 4 p.m. UTC to the 29th of May, 11 p.m. M, there will be a load of additional war bonds available too. So basically, war bonds are um, when you purchase something without using any store credit and you effectively get a discount off the price. You might be able to pick yourself up a sort of cheaper um, game package as well, so a starter pack, something like that. Uh, there will be some limited quantity ships sold as well, so basically CIG Go, these ships are supposed to be rare, and we only sell them in very limited quantities. This includes the RSI Constellation Phoenix, which will start being on sale from the 17th of May, the Aegis Idris P, which is that big old frigate, and Javelin, the even bigger destroyer, starting on the 21st of May, and the Drake Kraken and Privateer, those massive Drake ships, on the 25th of May. So these get sold in three waves at 4 p.m., midnight, and 8 a.m. UTC, starting on those days. Please remember, you will be able to buy all of these in-game with in-game monies too in the future, and that's true of all ships in Star Citizen, except, well, I'll put a little caveat here, there might be like a promo ship that's an exception like the Sabre Raven, but you should be able to buy that off another player with ABUC or steal them in-game, stuff like that. There will be ways of getting them. There's loads of other stuff to do as well other than rent those ships and see what's at the expo. Um, the UE Navy will be flying around at the low orbit stations and above landing zones. You can catch a glimpse of them and the Idris will be docking with stations from that fleet, allowing you to tour its interior. Info panels around landing zones will show the current fleet position. Visiting the expo on at least three different days during the event will get you a Spectrum badge and a little medivac beacon flare item. So that's sort of what you need to know about Fleet Week. There was a load of stuff in that 3.23.1 patch, um, improving it over the 3.23 initial build. Um, ship AI balance passes were made, allowing for use of partial aim assist based on AI skill level, and basically giving a difficulty curve going from lower to higher level threat missions. Uh, NPC locomotion saw a polish pass, preventing teleporting and janking so much. Medical bed respawning. This is a big one. Tier 3 medical beds now 
allow respawning. So basically all medical beds in game, at least at the moment, will allow for respawning. Tier 3s allow for respawning up to 20 kilometers away. Tier 2s, which previously were the only beds that allowed respawning, uh, now allow respawning up to 50 kilometers away. Previously, that was 20 kilometers. Uh, tier 1s aren't in the game yet, but assume there'll be an even longer range. Not sure if this is going to be a temporary measure, but expect it to evolve, whatever, and we'll see what happens with that. They've also made further game-wide client performance optimizations, um, interior map optimizations. There's been a water polish pass. Um, they've added character creator validations. There's been uh, visual improvements and fixes for VFX. They made further particle visual improvements for upscaling as well. And you want bug and crash fixes? Bam, they've got loads of those in too. Now, in Inside Star Citizen, they showed off some of the ships that were updated in that 3.23.1 patch and were going to be available during Fleet Week, either newly available or brought up to gold standard, that sort of stuff. So you've got the Sabre Raven, that was a um, 2017 Intel exclusive with the Optane drive, but that's actually been brought up to gold standard. It's an EMP interdictor fighter with uh, some additional computers for data running. It's basically built on a stripped down Sabre hull. Yeah, they brought the Sabre Raven up to gold standard. It has all its functional component bays and interaction points ready for engineering and physical components. Uh, its dashboard has had a pass too. It looks really cool, but this is also because they've got a new ship for Fleet Week, and that is the Sabre Firebird. It's basically a sibling or close variant of the Raven, but it's more combat focused. It focuses on missiles rather than EMPs. It's got 12 missiles from its bespoke belly launcher. It can fire them in rows of six. It's had a load of work done to differentiate itself visually from the Raven, bringing more of the original Sabre back into the design with its spine, wingtips, cutouts. They're all a bit different and yeah it's focusing on being a missile fighter that sort of fights on the periphery rather than a dogfighter. We've got the Urza Medivac as well. It is a medical bed version of the Urza Rover. It's got a laser Gatling turret and a tier 3 medical bed and obviously you can now respawn in those tier 3 medical beds so it's pretty cool. I would say make sure you close all of the doors to this when you leave it especially when you're on dangerous planets because people might be respawning in there. I do believe you get a like flight suit and helmet but you have to put them on but you'll be waking up um, gasping for breath uh, if you are on a, uh, a certain planet so bear that in mind close the doors. It's had basically the gold treatment as well it's got a ramp um, for bringing patients in the rear. There's a weapons rack with medigun storage. It looks really cool. It's really tactile. It has a medical paint and it's going to have a load of other paints as well that you can apply to the other Urzas if you wish. Now, we do know that there are some other updates effectively in this patch. Uh, the Retaliator has been updated to gold standard and it's got its cargo module in too. We're going to have that um, cargo modularity and be able to move those um, modules around soon. Um, and the Argo MPUV 1T, the tractor variant, is in for Fleet Week. So we're going to be able to see that later and we know that there's a functional RSI Polaris flying around uh, in the UEE fleet but it's external only it's no, not got an interior it's not sort of ready for players to have in their hands but we'll see it on the um, sort of uh, floor at the expo and we'll see it flying around as part of the UEE fleet and something that's also pretty exciting for me is being able to tour the internals of that Idris which are now sort of more ratified into game having um, the Idris internals we're going to see this a load more during uh, the uh, Xenothrek um, sort of fleet battle and uh, attack that's going to be run after Fleet Week. But boom, that's it for your Star Citizen Fleet Week updates and Alpha 3.23.1 updates and all those sort of ships and stuff. We'll be looking more at those ships and each of the different days at the Expo as it happens. So check out the channel for that. I am really interested to know, are you excited for Fleet Week? Are you trying Star Citizen for the first time? What do you think of 3.23.1? Are you having a great time? Are you having a terrible time? What do you think the prices of those ships are going to be? Do you think everything's going to get um, more expensive because CIG are a marketing machine? Or are you um, sort of like, don't really care what the prices are because you're just going to be getting everything in game. You just want to start a pack to get everything in game. Cool. It's a nice time to test all these random ships and vehicles, but uh, you're not going to spend real money on them. Whatever your thoughts or questions, I would love to hear from you in the comments below. And I'd love for you to click on the nordvpn.com slash board game, a link down below as well, if you want. A, a VPN. NordVPN is a really good one. It gives you better accessibility and privacy and securities on the interwebs. I use it. I love it. Links below. It helps the channel. There's also Toby Eye Tracker. Oh, 
precise native head tracking for Star Citizen and eye tracking as well. Oh, that's that's awesome. Super useful. I'm not sure why I'm making those sounds, but that suggests you should get them. Links below to all of that. May in Star Citizen is about fleets and Fleet Week and flying with friends, and we've partnered up with Lunar Wolves, a Star Citizen org, to give away a fleet of ships. Commenting on any of my videos during the month not only gets you a chance to win a Spirit C1, but also a Constellation Andromeda, a Vanguard Sentinel, and a Corsair, courtesy of Lunar Wolves. They'll each be going out to a different winner chosen randomly from the video comments. But wait, there is more. Sign up to the Lunar Wolves recruitment page link down below for a chance for even more ships including an rsi polaris with lifetime insurance and a horner f7c mark ii winners of those will be selected randomly from eligible org signups Lunar Wolves welcome all that share their passion for adventure and love of star citizen you can learn more about them on their org page or at lunarwolves.org if you would like to further support our channel, please like, subscribe, comment, share these videos. And if you'd like to go the extra mile, and I would love you to, please consider becoming a Patreon or clicking that join button under my videos. It goes a huge way in allowing us to make daily content and keep the channel going. You'll get some exclusive content from that as well. Any time Zin and I can actually put it out as well as help evolve the channel with polls and suggestions and that sort of stuff. Thank you so much for watching to the end and have a great May. It's going to be a good one.